On to the hour's first check of KCBS traffic and weather. The traffic from Kim in your local Honda dealer's traffic center. We well, got some new trouble for your ride. This or Tracy on eastbound 205. A brake light spotted by the Chilton Auto Body Collision Camp. There is a crash just before North Tracy Boulevard, blocking at least one lane. So I can see the traffic is slow uh, in pocket from 11th Street. No new problems for your ride on the Altamont Pass. No slowing westbound. No, we had to deal with that earlier this afternoon. There was a brush fire near North Flint impacting traffic westbound. It was contained after burning about eight acres there. So uh, that ended well. And uh, just slow in pockets there. Eastbound 580 between Greenville and the Grant Line Road. 580 through Livermore also is really starting to thin out. Still dealing with some delays for your ride through the San Ramon Valley and northbound 680 between Danville and Walnut Creek. We did have a crash close to Red Deer last hour as well, but very long now. So residual slowing there. And then eastbound 24, slow between Arinda and Lafayette. And then it's still backed up uh, through Oakland on eastbound 24. We have a stall in the Caldecott Tunnel, uh, which is clear now. Next update, 618 on the traffic meter, KCBS. Pretty seasonal temperatures today. They're starting to warm tomorrow, five or six degrees. Uh, we will see 70s, maybe a few low 80s near the bay, low to mid 90s inland. And then Friday's the peak of the heat. Excessive heat advisory inland, upper 90s to low 100s there. And then we start going back down the other way on Saturday. Traffic and weather together on the 8th on All News 1069 and AM 740 KCBS. The Double D Investment is hiring financial planners near you. Trade up to a company with the growth opportunities and innovative technology you'd expect from a large financial firm. Visit branches.fidelitycareers.com. Fidelity is an equal opportunity employer. Hi, it's Dr. Aaron Grigsby, founder of the Natural Pain Institute and Neurovations Clinical Research. If you or someone you know has moderate to severe low back pain from facet joint osteoarthritis, you might be eligible for one of our non-surgical clinical research studies. We're enrolling patients in a new clinical study for moderate to severe back pain to evaluate a very unique injection treatment. A tiny amount of DNA is placed in the joints of your low back, which may help your joints produce their own powerful anti-inflammatory medication. So if you have moderate to severe back pain from facet joint osteoarthritis, please reach out to us in Napa at Neurovations Research. We're the region's most experienced clinical research facility for chronic pain. If accepted for this study, you'll receive free study-related medical care and be compensated for your travel time and expenses. To see if you qualify, call Neurovations at 707-252-9606 at 707-252-9606 or go online at nvstudies.com. My friends at Pacific Coast Termite have treated almost 50,000 commercial businesses and homes, including mine, and they can help you too. Joe Starkey here. For years, you've been hearing me talk about the great experience my family and I had with Pacific Coast Termites. Well, recently, I visited their Fremont headquarters to personally thank them for their excellent work. I was impressed with everything from their professional courteous operators answering the phones to the experienced technicians who were headed out on home inspections throughout the Bay Area. They are A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau. Pacific Coast Termites solve my termite and rodent problems. They use orange oil and Altricept. They kill the termites and guarantee their work for two years. So if you're even thinking about a termite treatment, start where I did. Call Pacific Coast Termite at 800 Pacific. Call now and get 10% off your termite treatment. If you're an apartment or HOA owner, Pacific Coast Termite can help you too. That's 800-722-4342 or visit PacificCoastTermite.com today. KCBS News Time 611 with more news. Here's Jeff. Having a flow of water from River to Tapper Field is now a little more constrained here in California. 
KCBS with Chris Ann Carla reports on a move made to limit access to water in parts of the state. In California, water rights give preference to older claims. That's important now as supplies dwindle and drop and something called curtailment is put in place. Newer water claims are shut out of rivers and forced to turn to groundwater or reservoirs or go dry. The state water board's Eric Ekdahl calls these significant, very deep cuts for the San Joaquin watershed. In the Sacramento watershed, we actually don't anticipate significant curtailments at this time. It's largely related to the reduction in water use by the Sacramento River and by the river settlement contractors. As a group that exists to protect water rights and supplies of much of the Sacramento River watershed, there were curtailments last year too, but they came later in the summer. The drought is deepening and California Secretary for Natural Resources Wade Crowfoot says conservation continues to be a struggle. This week we learned that in April, Really, there was not the water conservation that we've called for across the state. The cuts will really hit farmers and irrigation districts hardest in the Central Valley, south of Sacramento. Chris and Carlo, KCBS. Game three underway in Boston. Kevin's going to update that between the Warriors and the Celtics in two minutes. Attention Bay Area homeowners. Are you looking to sell your house without all the stress? John Buys Bay Area Houses can buy your house cash and close on your timeline. No commissions, no repairs, no appraisals, no showings, no headache. Call John now, 510-426-7000, or go online to johnbuysbayareahouses.com to get a free, no-obligation cash offer for your house. Behind on payments, the tenants skipped rent, the house needs too many repairs, not a problem. John buys houses in any condition and deals with any situation. There's a reason why John Buys Bay Area Houses is the most trusted home buyer in the Bay. Go online to get your offer today. JohnBuysBayAreaHouses.com or call 510-426-7000. That's 510-426-7000.
through June 14th, plus an extra 10% off for Prime members while supplies last. See more on the Whole Foods Market app. Our Wednesday traffic watch continues at 618. Our next stop is San Jose, and we're checking in with Kim for details from your local Honda Dealers Traffic Center. A new crash is slowing your ride on southbound 101 in South San Jose. Possible injuries here, too, just before the Almaden Expressway off-ramp activity is on the right-hand shoulder. Also on 101 in Mountain View, southbound as you head towards San Jose. Injury crash just before the 85 interchange has just been cleared from the lanes, but still slow. Southbound off and on out of Palo Alto, northbound between Mountain View and Palo Alto, also still on and off the brakes there. No problems on the Dumbarton Bridge or the San Mateo Bridge if you're coming or going from the Nimitz Freeway. Earlier problems on northbound 880 between Fremont and Hayward are clear and still very slow, especially between Dakota Road and the E Street for the northbound ride. And 101 in San Francisco heads up for a car with a flat tire northbound on the ramp to northbound 280. That's why it's bunched up there. Next update, 628 on the traffic leader, KCBS. Mancini's Slip Roll 6 Day Forecast receives three free gifts with a qualifying mattress purchase now at Mancini's Sleep Roll. We're talking heat with KPIX 5's Darren Sachs. Okay, today's kind of fantastic, isn't it? It's like the mid upper 80s from many of our warmer inland spots, mid 70s in the Bay, and that's wonderful, and it's about to change. There's quite the warm up coming our way. You'll notice that tomorrow we go up another 5 or 6 degrees from here tomorrow, but Friday's today with the issue. Friday, many of us have a heat advisory. It's South Bay. Inland, East Bay, and North Bay Valley all have heat advisory on Friday. Some of those warmer inland spots on Friday are going to be in the little hundreds. Concord, Livermore, Santa Rosa, you guys. San Jose on Friday, you'll be in the mid-90s. But we'll keep it in the mid to upper 80s along the Bay Shore Line Peninsula. The city's only going to the upper 70s, so you don't have a heat advisory if you're right on the water. By Saturday, things start getting better. No more heat advisories. And by Sunday, take a high to inland on Sunday are going to be like in the upper 70s. Think about that for a second. Low hundreds on Friday, inland, upper 70s by Sunday. So it's a fast turnaround good news over there. I'm meteorologist Darren Beck with your KCBS KCI 5 for a killer forecast. We've got more on the Wednesday evening news watch. In the pre Roe v. Wade era, female activists calling themselves Jane built an underground network for women with unwanted pregnancies and provided low cost and free illegal abortions to an estimated 11,000 women. So that kind of is the history of the subject of the Janes, an HBO documentary that premieres in the network today. For more on this pivotal and especially timely project, we are joined on the KCBS Ring Central News Line by Pia Lesson, the Academy Award nominated filmmaker and co-director of the Janes documentary. Thanks so much for your time tonight. Tell us how the project first came together. Oh, hello. Thanks so much for having me. Um, well, we started developing this project um, in 2016. It, the writing was on the wall, and it has been for some time. You know, abortion rights have been hanging by a thread. And it was clear that, you know, the Supreme Court had Roe v. Wade in its crosshairs. And this story was so compelling and, and so dramatic. This group of ordinary women who risked a lifetime in a prison uh, to, to organize this underground network and, and provide abortion care to, to women in need, it, it just was quite a story and it was timely and you know we raced against the clock and the courts um, to get it done and it's actually premiering tonight on HBO. While you were filming and documenting these women's experiences, was there a common thread as a result of their actions? Well look, you know, these these women, they came into the civil rights movement, the student movement, the anti-war movement, and they were all unified, you know, by their desire to save women's lives. That that really was the bottom line. I mean, this was an era in, you know, before Roe v. Wade when when there were sex boards around the country filled with women who had either found abortions in back alleys or had taken matters into their own hands, couldn't even find a provider, and they were injured, they were infected, you know, many of them died. And so these women came together out of common decency, um, you know, it was it was they felt it was their moral obligation to break the law in order to, to save women's lives, and and they served about eleven thousand women over the five years that they were uh, that they were operating. Of course, this was all long before social media and other ways of communicating the way we do today. How did word spread about this organization? 
Well, these were pretty intimately resourceful for women. You know, many of them were mothers, homemakers. You know, some of them were organizers, and um, and and they got the word out. I mean, they had leaflets posted on bulletin boards. They put out ads in newspapers, uh, and and of course there was just a big word of mouth around Chicago. They were taking a big risk just advertising because at that time in Illinois, um, just just advertising for abortion services was a felony. You know, helping someone to get to abortion care was a felony, and obviously, you know, providing the care, you know, would also land you in prison. So, um, but but the word was out. Um, there were there were numbers, many numbers of women, you know, who were looking and desperate, and their alternative was. You know, in many cases, the mob. You know, the mob was an abortion racket in Chicago at that time. So, the Janes provided this compassionate care, skilled care um, to women in need. Did any of them get caught? Well, they sure did. Um, you know, look, they they got away with it. Here, they they evaded the police and the Catholic Church and and the the legislature. Um, but um, but yeah, the hammer came down. I guess. Uh, in 1972, in May of 1972, uh, the police raided an apartment where the Janes were performing abortions, and seven of them were rounded up along with their clientele. And you know they were um, they were put in jail. They they faced 110 years in prison. Uh, there were 11 counts each for abortion and conspiracy to commit abortion. And if it weren't for the decision in Roe v. Wade, which came down about six months after the grand jury indictment, they may still be in, they might have still be in, been in jail today. Well, thanks so much for taking some time for us tonight. It is premiere night, of course, for the Jane's documentary on HBO. That is Tia Lesson, Academy Award nominated filmmaker and co-director of the Jane's. Stock fell broadly today. We're going to check in on the money watch. Moving to finance with its new buy now, pay later service is the real thing. It plans to handle the lending itself for the new Apple Pay Later service that it announced this week. A wholly owned subsidiary, Apple Financing, will oversee credit checks and make loan decisions. The battery making business may be ready to take off in the U.S. Car companies switching from internal combustion engines to electrics want to build their own battery operations here, even if they're not headquartered in the U.S. Volkswagen is the latest. It's looking at setting up an in-house battery cell manufacturing operation in North America to ease an expected battery shortage. Uber is not worried about the economy. The company CEO says there will not be job cuts. Last month, he had said Uber would start treating hiring now as a privilege. On Wall Street, worry about inflation helps spur losses of three quarters to one and a tenth percent. The Dow dropped 269, the Nasdaq 89, the S&P 45. Joan Doniger, Bloomberg Business for KCBS. Hey, Bob, thanks for inviting me to your ultimate deal. Game? Yeah, thanks for coming. I thought we were going to watch the game. No, I said come check out the ultimate tailgate of my Chevy Silverado. Oh, it's the available multiplex tailgate. Bob, this isn't a tailgate. Sure it is. It flexes into six different configurations to help you work harder. It folds into a desk if you need a workspace, or a step if you need to get into the bed of the truck. It even helps you haul along items. It really is the ultimate tailgate. So, you didn't invite me to an ultimate pregame tailgate there. Would you have come if I said otherwise? But I bet you'll like this folding slow cooker holder I just made you. Ah, you shouldn't have. Chevy Silverado with available multi-flex tailgate. One more reason to 